Good afternoon everyone, it's nice to be here again. I don't know how many years running I've done it, but I, I come here every year, not for the music, because I look at you and I feel smart. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we've got an hour to kill before the proper musicians come on. And, uh, right. Shit, it's a, it's a good start, isn't it? I'll put that through there. And that in there. It's not like this on Countdown, is it? You just... Uh, just look a dick for three quarters of an hour. And no change there, mate, no. But I do know that 12 plus 1 is an anagram of 11 plus 2, and you didn't know that, so shut your mouth. <laughs> right, here we go then. Um, some new stuff for you uh, this year, but uh, one of the old ones to start with. Oh, lovely and warm for playing the guitar. And uh, this is a song called A Thousand Years, and uh, this is the greatest folk song of British history that's ever been written. It was written by me, and um, and you've just got a nice easy bit. Do, do, be, do, do, be, do, do, be, do, 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 be, do, by day. Now, I've got to work my set out as I go, because uh, I got up a bit late, I've planned nothing. So, are we doing Morris dancing this year or not? Yeah. Okay. Right, well let's see, let's see the hands and ankles in here. I want to see if you're going to do it first before I stand up here and do it on my own like a lemon. Oh yeah, okay, all the divs are here. Do-do-be-do-do-be-do-do-be-do-do-be-do-do-be-do-da-day. That's your bit, here we go. do do be do 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 <laughs> a thousand years loomed and disappeared Let's take a look at how it all started A thousand years ago Vikings run the show from the countries they all departed Vikings then well, out an ugly man, and for those who think that's strange, remember the two that sang Waterloo, and you find that nothing has changed. Yours, do do be 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 do do all day. Do do be 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 do do all day. 1066, the frogs attacked the Brits, a taste is how it gave a cry out. Watch what you're doing with that bow and arrow, son, or else you'll have somebody's eye out. Century fades, off to the Crusades, as far as bad as gold, it was a whopper. Henry II got the hub, they reckoned, and Thomas a Beck, he came a proper. That was something Henry would regret Tom became a saint and martyr Twelve hundreds came along with a king called John The geezer who was signed a Magna Carta Thirty, forty-eight, Europe's in a state Black death and half the people fall Not very great to lead Started off in Italy So it didn't really matter much at all Yod! Doop, 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 day On your own! Tap your feet for Christ's sake. 1415, another battle scene again. The French and British go to war. The result would be a great day in history and a way win for the Brits at Agincourt. 1492, he sailed the ocean blue from Italy, Columbus sailed. He founded America, which really makes you think would the world be better off if he had failed? Yours again, go! <laughs>
that's enough of that shit, isn't it? 16th century, 1500s. My tribute to Michelangelo. You may remember this one? Long ago, a man called Michelangelo. To his doctor he did go. He had a nasty pain. A stiff neck made him feel a right wreck. The doctor gave a quick check and to Michael did explain. Ceilings, stop painting bloody ceilings. You didn't get that last year either, did you? <laughs> oh bollocks, I ain't gonna waste my time with that one then. Oh, here's one you won't get. There are 12 million cyclists in Beijing That's a fact That's a fact that no one likes Cause it means 3 million cyclists don't have bikes <laughs> Anyone actually get that or not? Yeah? <laughs> 50, 45, Thomas Moore was alive 50, 40, 60, he was not they chopped off his head for something that he said But no one seems to know exactly what 1605, Sky will come alive If Guy Fawkes had ever had his way When we sit and stare at pricks like Tony Blair It's a shame that Guy Fawkes ain't around today Century of Trevelyan, the Jacobite Rebellion, Barney Prince Charlie heading south. Served his Mesa Dutton at the Battle of Culloden, surging right for spouting off his mouth. 1700s, England plundered in Boston, the Yanks got bumped. Tons of tons of tea they tossed into the sea, probably the world's most famous dump. 1805, Nelson just alive, kissed me hardy, he was heard to cry out. Hardy gave a cough, told him to piss off, which apparently made Nelson cry his eye out. Ten years on, Napoleon got it wrong, at Waterloo he faced devastation. Question we must ask after all these years have passed, what was he doing on that station? Here we go! Hey, thanks very much. And thank you for saving me. Bloody strap. Right, um, here's a new one for you, and this is for, I want you all to think back, don't matter how old you are, uh, as you know there are people in, uh, around in, in this field who are old, uh, if you have a look around. Um, well, there are some seriously old buggers around, aren't there, look. Just have a look at yourselves, but, but um, do you want to know how old you are? Okay then. A million housewives every day, pick up a tin of beans and say, Alright, you're old if you remember that, but you're not as old as the people that remember this one. One thousand and one cleans a big, big carpet Oh shit, no one's dropping out yet. <laughs> okay, try this. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And that's how you know you're real, because you remember the old ones better than you remember the newer ones, and that's all part of the illness that we're all going through, really, isn't it? Okay, so no matter how old you are, just think back to your primary school. Okay, mine, Vicarage Lane Primary School, East Ham, that was mine. And, uh, and, and think back to your school sports days, okay? Have a nice little thought. When the world was a nicer place, I think we all agree, don't we? Yeah, well, think back to your primary school and the sports days, okay? And always remember this, because I've discovered this, and no one knows it except me. On school sports days, the crap team in every school in Britain were the yellows. Isn't that amazing? 
reds, blues, greens, they used to win. And they always put the fatties and the asthmatics in the yellow team. And they came fourth, right? Well, <clears throat> I had this mate in my class, right, called Chris Thomas. And he was a real fat kid. And, um, and, uh, and, and he was in the yellows and they put him in the high jump. And it was a waste of time because he couldn't get off the ground, this kid. And um, so he came fourth and got some rolos and got fatter. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, I'm, I'm on a bit of a grumpy old man campaign, like the rest of us, I think, uh, who are here today, about political correctness, because um, it seems we can't really talk about anything now, and, and mums aren't allowed to call, say their kids have puppy fat and all that old stuff. And, uh, and it's they say this and they say that, and we're all pretty intelligent people, and we go about our lives the best way we can. And I've, I've often wondered who they are, you know, they who tell us we can't say this and can't say that. And we just look at the people who lead us, right? And, and we go to, start with a queen, I suppose, and, and a, a bloke who's, I think who should be a king, but I don't know what happened there. Uh, and, and his name's Prince Philip, as you probably know. He doesn't remember, but a lot of people do. And, uh, and underneath him is Blair, the aforementioned Blair. We won't go into politics, but um, we are supposed to entrust Blair with our lives. Um, and this is a man who looked across a crowded room, saw that woman and thought, oh, she's tasty, I'm going to marry her. <laughs> Blair Witch. And, uh, and let's be honest, come on, we're all mates. We've all come through the folky thing together. She's an ugly old trout, isn't she? <laughs> exactly. But nonetheless, we have to look after Tony Blair. Whatever our persuasion is, we have to look after him because if anything happens to him, we've got that horrible slob, that Prescott geezer, uh, and he's looking after us as well. So I presume that they are the people who tell us what we can do and what we can't do. And looking at them, I think I'd rather tell them to mind their own bloody business, actually, and we'll go about our own lives. There's a website that many of you know called Friends Reunited. You can go on Friends Reunited and get in touch with all your mates from school you haven't heard from for 40 years if you didn't like them. <laughs> Trouble is when you get to our age, if you click on Friends Reunited and see where your mates are, you get a list of cemeteries. <laughs> so anyway, this is um, a little song about going on to Friends Reunited and about my mate Chris. I don't know where he is these days, but anyway, it's his room. friends are still about so I joined friends reunited and decided to find out were they as tall as a playground wall or were they still around were they six feet tall or were they six feet under the ground it was all so long ago we all sat in a row still I see their faces but their names I just don't know it was all so long ago where did they go their names weren't on Friends Reunited I'm so excited, I'm delighted Cause I've invited my friends to call I'm excited, Friends Reunited So far I've heard nothing much at all Christopher Thomas, I recall what a great big bloke was he We used to call him Fatty, though I know that's not PC At the age of nine and a half he boasted 15 stone or more Christopher was built just like the proverbial brick house door It was all so long ago, still it makes me laugh Fatty Thomas now must be the size of a giraffe It was all so long ago, where did he go? His name wasn't on Friends Reunited I called big fellas He was in the yellows And he had marshmallows By the tongue And all big fellas Were slamming the yellows So the fellas in the yellows couldn't run I'm so excited I'm delighted Cause I've invited My friends to call I'm excited, friends reunited So far I've heard nothing much at all I'll never 
never forget the day that Chrissy had his name called out. Though he was never ever one to chuck himself about. They put him into the high jump, he was bigger than his dad. It was probably the only jump that Chris had ever had. It was all so long ago, we laughed just like a drain. He jumped into the sand and he was never seen again. It was all so long ago, where did he go? His name was an on Friends Reunited. I'm so excited, I'm delighted, cause I've invited my friends to call. So far I've heard nothing much at all Yes, I often sit and I wonder if my friends are still about So I joined Friends Reunited and decided to find out Were they as tall as a playground wall or were they still around? Were they six feet tall or were they six feet under the ground? It was all so long ago, we all sat in a row Still I see their faces but their names I just don't know It was all so long ago Where did they go? Their names weren't on Friends Reunited I'm so excited I'm delighted Cause I've invited My friends to call I'm excited Friends Reunited So far I've heard nothing much So far I've heard nothing much so far I've heard nothing much at all Okay, I better do a quiet one Everyone else does Okay, this is a ballad I came the other night as a punter to watch Steelite because that's where my life really sort of began with the folk scene. It was great to see Maddie and Rick and all the gang and Peter Knight and all that. And, um, and I was listening to singing Lord Lankin and I just thought, oh wow, I remember that sort of ballad from Donkey's years ago really, it was early Steelite. And I thought, well I'm going to do a ballad on Saturday, on, it is Saturday isn't it, on Saturday, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and the one I've chosen is this one, and it also goes back to uh, school days because uh, I'm a bit of a stickler in believing that uh, we live through probably the greatest time to ever be alive, really, when you see all the shit that's around today. Um, and this is a song about my first ever love. I'm going to dedicate this to various people. First of all, to my granddad. We used to call my granddad Spider Man because he couldn't get out of the bath. That's the sort of shit I do on Countdown to pay my mortgage, you know that? And also, I dedicate it to my dad, who was one of the most stupid people I ever knew. We had an allotment 500 yards from our house and he tarmacked it. <laughs> Died a very wealthy man. He opened a shop at Shit Creek selling paddles. <laughs> I dedicate it also to this very special girl. I don't know where she is now, she blew me out, but I don't matter. I was 16 years and three months, she was more or less the same. Her face is rather hazy, I can't recall her name. We would speak of all the dreams we had hope they all come true so many of mine have done i hope she made it through but she was always by my side when i learned the birds and bees and i think she was the reason I failed my GCs. I always knew I'd find a way out 
From the dead end streets we knew Occasionally I wonder If she found her way out too Through the kisses of young innocence We dreamed of being free When I'm on her television Does she realise it's me? She was always by my side And I have fond memories Of the girl who was the reason I failed my GCs When and blew me out one Christmas Caused me such distress I don't think I deserved it I was just one present less I couldn't eat my Christmas dinner My mind was such a state Boxing day was better I went and shagged a maid And her face is rather hazy I can't recall her name But I learned a lot from her Then failed my GCs again This has been my only other love song I've ever written. A song about Shirley. <clears throat> you won't see many class guitarists at this festival playing C, A minor, F and G. I do. How many people in the audience can play C, A minor, F and G? Oh, okay. How many people have got a capo? I don't feel very important now. How many people have got a bucket strap? <laughs> Every time I look at Shirley, I seem to lose my senses. I get a violent nosebleed, she misses up my contact lenses. Every time I look at Shirley, I know there is no other. And I don't mind the Shirley's made of rubber. <laughs> I don't know what it is about me that seems to attract her. She used to be an inner tube on someone shagged out tractor. The farmer climbed on board every morning bright and early. And in a funny way, I suppose I do the same to Shirley. <laughs> One took her from the farm and ironed out the creases Painted on her face and added various bits and pieces Her mouth is always open, her eyes are always staring Her legs go up and down more if I put less air in You know She's got rubber lips and rubber hips and even a rubber belly she isn't Taurus, Leo, Pisces, Shirley is Pirelli She doesn't shout or move about, she doesn't even show out But Christ, you have to hold on tight when she has a blowout <laughs> Okay, now... <laughs> what are we doing on my stage? <laughs> Come on in, you other one. Hey, look at this, lad. Okay. Well, I don't care. Right, okay. Um, I literally bumped into, I was just doing an interview just now for Radio Oxford, um, which is in Oxford. If, if you don't live around here, and um, and, I walk, and and Ashley Hutchins walked past, and uh, it reminded me of last year, 
because Ashley was signing his book and his records and all things last year when I was on. And uh, we made a big tribute to Ashley Hutchins because he was a very important person, I think, in our folk scene, don't you? From the Albions and Fairport and all that stuff. And um, so anyway, it, I was reading my programme. There's nothing about me in the programme because I didn't send them nothing. And uh, I ain't got no tapes to sell, no books, no CDs, got nothing. I'm just here. No, no, listen, you don't get, no, no, you don't get the gist of why I'm, the reason I do the God slot is because, no, A, no one else will bloody do it, B, I'm quite happy to be here and up here doing a thing and I get in for nothing and, um, and you bubbers paid, I didn't, I got in for nothing, I got a car pass and everything and I can have now the rest of the afternoon off, I'll be over there on the beer tent, you don't have to queue up and things to get autographs from me, I've got nothing to sign because all them, like Richard Thompson, all them top people, they sit over there, don't they, and you sign stuff. Not with me, you don't. I'll be at the bar. I'll be over there, over there, and, uh, and and that's my day. My day here is to meet all my old friends, stand at the bar. But I can't do it if I've got a gig, you see. So I get my gig out of the way early. So I think I'm the smartest one here, really, don't you? <laughs> now then, um, so okay, now listen. So so I'm in for nothing. I've got my car just behind me there. I get a free pint over there, and we have a laugh. And that's really what it's all about. There's some great people on today. There's great people on yesterday, um, particularly. Um, for me, it's, it would be John Martin because um, my whole life, really, in, when I was at college in Glasgow, which was an absolute tarsy when I was there, um, me and John Martin used to hang out together and he taught me an awful lot about guitaring and uh, other stuff that I didn't touch, but uh, nonetheless, I think you know John Martin. And, um, and, and to see John Martin and Doug Mortar and, and Steve Lyon, for me, it really takes me all the way back to really what I was ever supposed to be, really, I think, which was a folky... Um, just like yourselves, because this is a bit sacred for us, isn't it? Once a year we come here and have a good old time uh, and so on. Um, there are some shit people on this weekend as well, I think we all agree with that, but um, we won't single them out, I think they know they are. But, but, there ain't no Morris dancing. Now, I personally hate Morris dancing. Uh, it, it's a bit like um, it's a bit like train spotters with hankies and things like that. And, and it's not really my thing, to be honest. But last year, I became in love with it by what we did. I've never really been involved with Morris. I've never played Morris tunes because I can't. Um, but we set up last year the biggest Morris dance of all time, which should have gone into the Guinness Book of Records, perhaps, you know, perhaps not all because of Ashley Hutchins and he's here again this year because I've already seen him and so we'll try and make it even bigger this year I ain't got no Morris tune, I didn't have one last year but um, if you take a sort of a London song like um, Doing the Lambeth Wall Oh, that, okay uh, and I thought well I, I could sort of rejig it around and change the time and, and the signature and stuff and maybe we could make that into a Morris tune or something but I'm not going to do it if you ain't going to do it because you know, I'm exposed up here, I'm on my own, against you lot, and if you just stare at me, this ain't, ain't gonna work, and I'm gonna feel very silly. So, are we up for the world's biggest Morris dance, or not? Yeah! Okay, wave if you're up for it. Okay, if the miserable bastard next to you is just sitting there, not waving, smack him in the mouth, okay? Because this is a London Morris dance. You imagine if, if Cockney's actually had invented Morris dancing, and that's sort of where we're going to go. There was a little finger back. Uh, I think they go, doing the Lambeth walk. Oh, I think it's something like that, but I don't really know. And then I was thinking, what else could I do that would be a Morris dance? And I just thought to myself, wouldn't it be great if Freddie Mercury had been a folky? <laughs> so you sort of do. Mama just killed a man. Do you know that one? Anyone know that one? Yeah, it was a hit. Can you give me a bit more guitar on this? I think I've got to play this properly. I ain't going to get away with this mucking around. Right. So what we're going to do is a mishmash Morris dance this because I'm not a traditional folky and I don't know any Morris tunes at all. But we're going to readapt the Lambeth Fork and the Lambeth Fork will be the chorus. Wherever we, wherever I go, and I ain't got a clue where I'm going, um, um, we have to get back to the Lambeth Fork because I can play that. All right? <laughs> and then I won't let you down. So we're going to start with that. You go, any evening, any day, any time down Lambeth Way, 
And we might do Bohemian Rhapsody as a Morris dance. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think we can do it or not? Because it's all right for you to go, yeah, you're not bloody playing it, are you? <laughs> okay, let's see if we can do it. Okay, so of uh, uh, so it goes. Mama just killed a man. What have I done against his head? Keep going, I'm on a tenner. <laughs> Here we go, let's try the Lambeth walk then. Give you the chords, you've got to, you've got to la 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 and sing it and do whatever you want to do, okay? And if you bugger it up, it's your fault. There we go, I'll give it one more time. I've got to get back into Bohemian Rhapsody now. <laughs> Too late, my time has come. Say shivers down my spine, body's aching all the time. Goodbye, everybody, it's time to go. Gonna leave it all behind and let the go. Mama, ooh. Didn't mean to make you cry, didn't mean to make you cry. If I'm not back again, it's time to go. really pissed people off with hay fever, haven't we? <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to introduce you to a mate of mine now, and um, I think it was last year, I don't really remember, my life sort of wanders by, it might have been the year before, but they had this thing about the greatest British person, and it was won by Winston Churchill, and um, I came seventh. <laughs> But only in my street, you know, we had a little, little one, you know, down the park, and I came to seven, that was good. And um, Winston Churchill wouldn't be my top Great Britain person, to be honest. Um, he's not really arty enough for me, uh, although he painted. But there was a painter who was brilliant, his name was uh, John Constable. And, um, and that's the sort of person I'd be going to vote for. Um, him, Wayne Rooney, you know, those sort of people. And, um, and John Constable was a great landscape painter, as you know. And um, I just thought, yeah, he'd be pretty high up on my ranking. And um, he became a painter purely by fluke, really. His dad ran the mill at Flatford Mill, as you obviously know all this. And uh, one day he saw this old cart in a river and he said, John, do us a favour, go and paint that cart, will you? And, um, 
and he did. And um, anyway, when I started out years and years ago doing folk clubs, um, the first place I ever really worked up in was Wales. And um, there was a, a great mate who became a really big friend of mine who ran the clubs down there through Pembroke and all that way, right across the Wales and, and in the festivals down there, um, called Arnie Cottrell. And a lot of you know Arnie, he's a great side player. And uh, I said to him, look, I'm doing property this year. Do you fancy doing it with me? And he said, not really. So um, what he did, he, he put me onto his friend, uh, who's not as good as Arnie by any means. Um, but I can't really do this song on my own. So I'd like you to uh, make a really big property welcome. It's first time on stage, he's done so many clubs and a lot of you from the Blues Club know him very well as well. He's a great player. Ladies and gentlemen, Arnie Cottrell. I'd like you all to look at Arnie and give him a round of applause. He's just left school. To find my fate 
and fortune in the strand. My eyes were open wide, and with Maria by my side, we travelled England's green and pleasant land. Scenes. To never die, that was my greatest dream And as the seasons call, my leaves will never fall And my rivers, they shall never ever flow You painted what you saw John, you were a genius You'll live forevermore Many years have passed, I cannot count them. Two hundred, maybe three, it's hard to tell. It's incredible to see that you all remember me, and you all stare at my words of art as well. I never sold a single painting And I know that other painters say the same That was never my desire Cause I always value higher The facts that you can still recall my name Country scenes to never die. That was my greatest dream. And as the seasons call, my leaves will never fall. And my rivers, they shall never ever flow. England meant to me. It's the England that I know many hundred years ago, not the England that it came of age to be. Now my final landscape is completed. 
my pains they have dried It's incredible to see that you all remember me Through my masterpieces I have never died Blues and greens and English country scenes to never die that was my greatest dream and as the seasons call my leaves will never fall and my rivers they shall never ever flow and my children they shall never You painted what you saw John, you were a genius You'll live My mate, Arnie Cottrell, first time at Cropperty. Well done, Arnie. Right. That was my little dream to play with someone up here and just do a nice song. All right, wasn't it? Yeah, who thought I played better than him? Two. Ah, oh, great. Okay, well, I'm going to start winding up now. I've got 12 minutes to uh, finish off and... Um, uh, well, we'll forget the encores. I know what you want. You, uh, what you want you to do is you want me to keep coming back and doing more. And I, no, no, I won't do that. So um, um, we're just going to finish it off in 12 minutes. Enjoy the rest of the day, and thank you so much for making me welcome. It means a lot for me to be at Property. It does every year, and they can't get anyone else to do this slot. So I'll be back here next year, no doubt. It's not because I like you, I've got 20 grand for doing this. I'd do it if you weren't here, don't bother me. Um, one of the greatest audience participation things I think we were ever brought up on uh, as kids was probably the last night at the proms. It's, uh, it's a big event, it, it's once a year, and it can't really be achieved in, in any other way in any other part of the world, I don't suppose. And to do that, um, um, we couldn't do it because you need a, an orchestra, 280-piece Royal Philharmonic, you need a 400-piece professional choir, and looking at you lot, I can't see us pulling that one off. And, <laughs> and six and a half thousand pissed up students, that's about as close as we get, I think. <laughs> and to finish my grump, uh, I read, probably the same as many as you, uh, as yourselves, um, just a couple of weeks ago, that the last night of the proms, um, had to this year abolish um, land of hope and glory because it wasn't politically correct. And I'm not so sure about that personally. Uh, I think we all have our views, but I don't think you can just drop a song because it ain't right or, or whatever. And there's a very simple answer. If you don't like land of hope and glory, don't bleed and listen to it. It's probably the best way we can put all of that stuff <laughs> into perspective, crap. And, um, and then, of course, um, Jerusalem, which is a William Blake piece, which is uh, part of our heritage, that's also not right because it might offend people who, um, who have come to the country and, and can't really relate to Jerusalem. <laughs> and, um, yes, I think bollocks is the word we were looking for here. <laughs> I just have this hunch if, look, look, do you remember our parents' era 
and lots of people emigrated to Australia. Um, if I emigrated to Australia and didn't like it, there's a very simple answer for me. I'd yeah. come back and um, I wouldn't want to try to ab abolish the boomerang or anything like that. So. <laughs> Not much chance, really. You couldn't sling it away, could you? <laughs> and then I was thinking in my, my quiet moments at home, I was just thinking, Christ, if there's anywhere where we could pull this off, it's got to be Cropperty. How about our own last night at a proms to see us through? Now, this is impossible. You do know it's totally impossible. But we might just be able to pull it off, OK? Now, um, my guitar will be a 280-piece orchestra. You will be a professional choir. So grow up at your age. Okay, do your ear and, and just be a bit smart. And then we will um, dispense with the 6,500 students. We don't need them because we've got us. So we'll do it in the order of the Royal Albert Hall. Okay, we start with Jerusalem. Now, if you don't know it, I don't know Jerusalem because I was never a religious person. I, I, um, I never read the Bible at school, I didn't see the point, you know, it was 800 pages and I knew what happened at the end. He, well, he dies and, uh, and you get an egg with Smarties in it, don't you? So, I, I know nothing. I, I'm, not a, I'm not political, I'm not religious, I'm just a nothing really, I'm just from East Ham, you know, and enjoy myself. Um, I tried to be a born-again Christian a few years ago, but that wasn't religious. It was because I missed breastfeeding the first time and um, fancied another bash. But, um, well, I didn't actually miss it the first time. I just didn't enjoy it because my mum was asthmatic. So, uh, so all my milk used to taste of Vic. So, I can't do... Oh, come on, grow up. This is crap I'm doing up here. I can't do Jerusalem words all the way through, but I'll try and play the guitar and be the 280-piece orchestra. <sighs> um, and in return, you sing Jerusalem. If you don't know it, like I don't, just la-la-la, but everyone has to either la or sing the words, okay? Does anyone actually know the words? Oh, you do. Let's have a little practice. Then. And did those feet La, if you don't know it. Oh, okay, straight through, yeah. Let's get pissed off, just stop. Okay, well we can handle that one. Uh, and then from um, from Jerusalem, you're gonna have to sing it a lot louder than that. This is the proms. And from Jerusalem, we go to the Sailor's Hornpipe. Now, those of you that play, hey, come on now, a lot of you play acoustics, and those of you that play guitar know that this is a real bastard to play. So I will do a very basic version of it, but don't speed up. <laughs> come on, you're my friends. Don't make me look stupid up here. Just keep it nice and slow. And from there we go to the band Land of Hope and Glory. Um, what you do first time around with Land of Hope and Glory, if you know the last night of the proms, you just hum. So it sort of goes. <laughs> you can hum a bit louder if you want. <laughs> Okay, got that, and then we'll do that all the way once, once round, and then you go and burst in with Land of Hope and Glory, thingy, 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 thing, thing. Because I don't know that one either. And then we finish with Royal Britannia. And do you know what, people of property and people of the folk scene of many years ago, I think it's time that us lot, just for once, were actually proud of this country and stop putting up with all this crap that goes on and just go we're not uh, 
We're not racists, we're not lefties or rightists, we're just a bunch of people who want a bloody good time and uh, we happen to be very proud of where we come from with our mums and dads and grandparents and so on. So this is it. This is the acoustic version, guaranteed to be bubbled up, of <laughs> the last night of the proms. Do I care? Not really, no. So. <clears throat> I'm going to concentrate on this. So you just sing away. I'll guide you through best I can. Thank you so much for putting up with this. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'll see you at the bar and enjoy the rest of the day. Here we go. Those feet twice as loud as that you're just sort of going through it aren't you because it's early you're gonna sing as loud as you sing meet on the ledge and all the other classics all right bring me my bow of burning gold here we go those hands. There's a proud bunch. Just look behind you if you're embarrassed.
Britannia rode the way. Britannia's never, never, never shall be. Twice as loud, go for it! Roll Britannia, Britannia rules the way.